Well, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just doing a quick little type test here on a couple of different machines um, to kind of clear up some stuff and some things. I'm looking for a ruler. I have a type ruler around here somewhere. Mm, I'm not going to spend too much time looking for it. I didn't prepare this video. It's just kind of an impromptu thing. Uh, here we go. Type ruler. Um, this is a quick Pika, Pika versus Elite explainer. A little basic course on, on typewriter fonts and, and types. Um, most typewriters you get, they're going to be the same uh, font or type style, I should say. You know, we don't we, we don't we don't use the word font in type or use typeface, I know, but you know it's it's a font, it's a type based style. So uh, these two machines here are royal machines, royal portables. They have the same carriage width, the same platen width, and they have the same typeface but one is a pika pika machine and one is an elite machine now the easiest way you can tell between the two is a type sample obviously you can see that this is an elite machine and this is a pika machine which is 11 characters per inch which means it types 11 letters per measured inch or i'm 12 i'm sorry 12 pika is 12 excuse me my mistake I've been talking about typefaces today and got a lot of numbers on the mind. Um, this is a pika. The lower one is pika, pika, and it's 10 characters per inch, which means it types 10 individual letters per measured inch. And we have a, a, a little type ruler right here that this is the Westcott type. It's rule, and you can see it's got a pika side, an elite side, and there's spaces, 10 spaces per one inch and then if you flip the ruler over you'll see there's 12 spaces per one inch so it looks smaller because it is smaller it is more compact closer together tinier uh, the typeface height can be shorter in comparison but a lot of times it's not uh, it's just the visual Mm, illusion, I guess you could say illusion because of the way I have two different inks on here too. This is cotton versus regular nylon. But you can see this is the same sentence. This is the test of this machine and how it types. And this is the test of the machine and how it types. And this is an elite size and a pica size. And you can see how many letters you can fit on a line or a page. And a lot of times people think that this looks too big and spaced out on a page and then some people think this looks too small and tiny on a page and it's hard to read sometimes uh, if you have trouble with your with your vision there is an 11 character per inch machine which is a goldilocks and it'll fit in between this block size and uh, uh, some people see see that as the the perfect size machine um, there are a couple of ways you can tell on a machine right away just by looking at it, there's this scale on the back here, and you see how this one goes up to 80 or 84. You look at the, I usually just look at these tall numbers or the whole numbers. Uh, on a portable machine with this general sized platen size and carriage size, there are there are a few portable machines that, that differ from this rule, like some of the Hermes 3000s. They're they're a little bit longer. But most of the American machines and uh, Euro machines will have a similar sized platen width. And if you see an 80, then you can generally think that it's going to be a pica machine. And you don't really need to see a type sample of a pica machine if you know that it's a pica. Because there aren't really many specialized fonts or typefaces in the pica size. So generally, if you see an 80 here, you're going to be getting this. Okay. There are rare instances where, where you'll get um, an italic or a bolder Congress style font or typeface or a, a techno sort of senatorial looking robotic typeface. And those come in pica. But on these American machines, uh, 80, you're going to get that, the big guy on the bottom. It's just the way it is. There's not that many special characters, or special typefaces in these older American machines. Now, if you're looking at one of these older American machines or any type portable typewriter and you see a large number like this, 
100. You see how the pica only went up to, to 84. Now this elite is going up to 100. And generally, if you see that high number, it's because it can fit a lot more letters on a line. But the type style is the same. Now, if you were looking at it without the scale next to each other, like here you can tell, I mean, the scale is in uh, a visual aid scale you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless you're comparing one versus the other. If I just handed you a single sheet of paper with this is a test of this machine and said, what is this, an Elite or a Pica? It's going to be hard to tell because you need the scale visually in, to reference each other against each other to, to see the, the difference in, in size. So if, some, if you ask somebody for a type sample and they just give you the quick brown fox lazy dog thing, you're just going to see a bunch of the same letters in a row and it's not really going to be that helpful because your your size is what you're what you're asking about on pica versus elite now if you are looking for a specific type style uh, like a vogue or a cursive those are things that you can look for in in some machines the vogue machines it, they'll only come on these 80 scale lengths so if you're looking for a vogue a royal vogue and you're, you're dead set on, on, on looking for one quick before somebody else finds it. The first thing you do, you open up the site, open up the page, look at the thing, look directly to the scale. If it says 100 and you're only looking for Vogue, it's a pass. You're, you're not going to pick up a Vogue with 100 on it unless somebody swapped the, the slugs out, which in that case, it's an even more special Vogue. <laughs> and maybe you are interested in finding a Vogue in a, in a hundred, but you're not going to find one from the Royal Factory unless it's on that 80. Uh, Olympia machines, they'll have the same scale length, either 80 and 90 or 100, depending on what, what you're looking at. And there'll be an arrow in the dead center arrow of the, the number. And it'll be pointing to the 40 if it's pica and then over here on the the olympia elite machines the arrow the red arrow will be pointing at 45 because the red arrow is splitting the carriage directly in half to tell you where the halfway mark is in your carriage and so an elite machine the halfway point is going to be 45 or 50 in this case it would be, but on the olympia machine it would be 45. now on the olympia machines uh, script generally only comes in the elite sizes. So you're going to look at if it, if it has an 80, then there's a good chance it's not script. Okay. So if you're dead set on looking for an Olympia machine with script, and the first thing you do is you run to this, the typewriter and you go 80. Nope, not what I'm looking for because I'm looking for 90 or higher for a script typeface on an Olympia machine. And there's lots of little aspects and hidden things like that you can you can do when you're searching for specific things, but visual confirmation is always the best confirmation if you're looking for a specific typeface style like a Congress or a Techno or a script or an Italic. But if you're just mainly interested in Pica versus Elite, then it's just the scale size. It's just the size and the width of how many letters you can you can fit on a page. So I hope that helps. It's kind of a little explainer about Pica versus Elite. And I didn't have a whole lineup of machines that we can go through to discuss and, and show examples of. So this is just the basics. And I'm not a type font expert or type style expert, but I do look for them. And I specifically look out for certain ones. So these are some of the things that I look out for. And if you have any questions about type fonts or styles, uh, let me know. And you can search up, if you're interested in what machines have what typefaces, you can Google search like Olympia typeface, typewriter typefaces. And then there'll be tons of Google images with Olympia typefaces and the styles that they offered. And you can see the pitches on there. It'll, know, it'll generally tell you if it's a 10 or a 12 or if it's an 11, and then you can kind of remember that the 10s come on the 80s and the 11s and 12s go higher than 80. Then you can kind of start narrowing your search down visually that way. And yeah, that works for pretty much every manufacturer out there. Hermes, you can do a Hermes typeface search, a Smith Corona typeface search, and you can have your, uh, your, your fill of hunting for specific type styles. But this is a quick 10 minute explainer 
on typewriter typefaces and hopefully you guys got something out of it. All right, we'll talk to you later.